Riots break out on Juneteenth. Megan Rapinoe gets canceled because of a racist tweet, and more people begin to speak out against critical race theory in classrooms. I'm William Hall, and this is The William Hall Show. All right, welcome back to the show. Glad to have you back here. So getting into what we're talking about here, this past weekend, I'm sure most of you already know if you listen to the show on Thursday, that this past Saturday was the first Juneteenth, I guess, celebration as a federal holiday this time. Now, Juneteenth is something that's been around for a while. It was already a holiday in Texas, and I already voiced my opinion on why it shouldn't have been made a federal holiday because of how it would be used, not because of the generalized meaning of it. Now, many people took to Twitter and were talking about this, specifically with Charlie Kirk, maybe a few other people, where they said, well, Trump was looking at passing it. You didn't have a problem with it back then, but now you have a problem with it. Listen, it would have been a smart political move for Trump to have passed that or to put it up for a vote. However, the meaning of it is still a bit ridiculous in the way that the left was going to use it. That's the problem. At least if it passed on to Trump, we could say for five years from now, 10 years from now, hey, that holiday that you guys love to talk about white hate so much was kind of passed by, I don't know, this guy that you hate a lot, like Trump, right? Like Trump was the one that did this, if that was something that actually took place under his administration. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. So it's under Biden, and now they have all the reason in the world to really full-scale Put this up and say this is going to be used as a white hate holiday, which has already taken place. And I've shown plenty of tweets proving that fact. You don't have to look hard for it. Trust me. Just go to Twitter, type in Juneteenth, and I guarantee you within five posts down, you're going to see some person being extremely racist towards white people about the holiday. So, like I said, it happened this weekend. And... The thing is that a lot of people, first of all, didn't even know that Juneteenth was a thing. Most of the people that are celebrating it had never heard of this thing before. And by the way, Barack Obama never talked about it in any of his speeches, never brought it up. It was never anything that he dealt with whatsoever. He never even tweeted about it. But obviously until recently, but during his administration, none of that stuff actually took place. So you had all of these Juneteenth celebrations taking place all across all across the country. Most of these are going to be in the black neighborhoods. And as suspected, as I kind of thought to myself, it automatically turned violent. So if you're listening to this on the audio version, what you're seeing here is this white lady actually being bit, uh, beaten. She's uh, They're dragging her around. There's all of these black people and black women surrounding her, punching her, doing all this ridiculousness right in the, in the video there. And, and this is supposed to be okay? I, I mean, come on, folks. Is this really what Juneteenth is about, just beating a bunch of white people up? I don't, I don't understand. Now, look, I get it. There isn't a context to it. But I really have a hard time finding this to be validated in any situation. And the reason why is because it gets worse, because it's not even specifically about this white versus black thing. It gets worse when we're talking about actually what's taking place on their own issues. So, but once again, this isn't a validation for rioting. It never has been, never will be. But we, of course, knew that this would happen because that's what happens anytime there's a black anything being celebrated that they wind up going off the rails and people start acting like fools. So there's an additional, or sorry, an additional video they're showing a mob of hundreds of rioters tearing through city streets as police struggled to keep the situation under control and has been seen in recent race riots throughout the country. Several rioters took breaks from the action to twerk while others danced on the tops of moving vehicles. Is it, This is ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous to me that this is the behavior that is okay because it's Juneteenth. Might as well twerk in the streets. That's exactly what we should be doing here. That, that's some real, real justice happening. I don't understand it. So an emergency responder was actually shot while assisting a child with a medical call at a Juneteenth event 
at Roberts Park in Raleigh, North Carolina. Now, they said that basically they were having this celebration. They had all of these food trucks there. It was this big black community celebration or whatever. This child had a serious medical issue. Someone dialed 911. The ambulance shows up. EMS gets shot. Why? Who knows? Probably because it's just a bunch of black people there. Maybe they hate first responders. I don't know, but it just happens. The crowd goes crazy. I, how is this? You know, you, you hear this group, all of them there would say, well, we, we stand with black lives matter, but black lives don't matter to you because you're, you're when you shoot an EMS person, what you're doing is that automatically police have to show up to the scene and try to, all you're doing is basically taking away the aid away from the child that needed it, the black child that needed the aid that actually had the ambulance call it for them wind up being in a more compromised situation because somebody in your own community was too stupid and couldn't help themselves but to shoot an EMS person for whatever reason. You don't care about black lives. You never have. It's plain and simple, just thugs acting like thugs, and nobody wants to say what it is, but that's what's happening. That's basically what's taking place here. So there was actually another deadly shooting in Oakland, California as well, same on Saturday, on Juneteenth, and... They're basically twerking and dancing all on top of this ambulance. And as I've said before, what is this supposed to accomplish? Seriously, somebody answer this question for me. And I've talked about this with other events that have taken place when there was some either a death of some black person or what have you. They can't find one day. I mean, like, remember the George Floyd anniversary and the uh, one of the reporters was actually just on the scene trying to report what was happening. You had the George Floyd Memorial taking up this whole entire intersection and then what takes place? 30 shots fired in about 30 seconds because it's the hood. And, and you know what? These people can't take one day to cut out the stupidity. They can't. This is the problem with this hip-hop culture. And a lot of people are saying it's hip-hop culture. It's really black culture, to be honest with you. And people want to blame all these other things. They want to say, oh, it's the white man. It's this. It's the government. No, it's your own community that is causing you to act like this because you're validating this behavior and you want social justice somehow? You don't get social justice when you are shooting EMS, people that are trying to actually help out a black child that had a medical issue at this celebration. You, you don't get to enjoy all of these other things when that's the way that you behave. Because before you realize it, ambulance aren't gonna wanna show up to your neighborhood, Police don't want to show up to your neighborhood. No first responders are going to want anything to do with you because they know that it's not safe because of stuff like this. They, you can't trust these people whatsoever. And they're in these situations. They're talking about all of this stuff that they want, getting mad about George Floyd, feeling like black. Oh, dude, they want to rally behind this Black Lives Matter organization. But none of them can control themselves, have any self-control have any ability to operate in a civilized manner, and for some reason they want all of these all of these things to go along with it. Yeah, I'm not listening to anybody about these issues until they can act like civilized people. Just respectable people. Because, once again, is this about their skin color? Well, a lot of them happen to be black. But the truth is, is that this is about the character of these people. They have bad character. These are uh, thugs. These are ghetto people that are acting ridiculous they're they're doing things that are absolutely insane or can be considered as insane in any 
community. And they're doing it and they're getting a free pass from the police officers because the police don't want anything to do with it at all. And we're supposed to just give all of them these rights and these or the, whatever it is that they want. It's not even really rights at all, to be honest with you. That's not what they're talking about. What they're wanting is special treatment, which they're already getting because they're allowed to do this. They're the only group in the United States right now that is able to twerk on top of an ambulance and not get arrested for it. They're the only ones in America right now that can continue to behave this way and get a free pass somehow. Because social justice? Yeah, it it sounds ridiculous, and that's because it absolutely is. So I really don't care to hear about all these issues that they want to solve and Juneteenth being a thing. If this is the normal behavior for Juneteenth, I'm not looking forward to it. Lock your doors on Juneteenth because if this is what we're supposed to be expecting... I don't, I'm not looking forward to this day next year. I'm not. Because it's just going to be another situation where black people continue to act a fool in the streets and think that it's perfectly okay just because they're black. The left is now rushing to call this pride parade death a terrorist attack, or at least they were at first. So let's kind of go through this timeline of events to see exactly what took place. So first of all, So this is started off by a tragic accident that took place at the Stonewall Pride Parade in Wilton Manors, Florida. So not far from where I'm at here in Central Florida right now. And it was turned into a political weapon by Democrats and the media supporters because of what took place. One man was killed while another was injured when a driver of a uh, pickup truck accelerated and ran them over. Within moments of the tragedy and before any information was known, Democrats and the media began treating this like a deliberate attack on the LBGT community because that's the way that they treat all of these incidents. So this is a post directly from or, or a statement that was released directly from the mayor directly following these events. So what they said is, quote, this is a terrorist attack against the LBGT community. And then they went on to say, and this is, by the way, Mayor Dean Trentalis. Uh, so they went on to say, this is exactly what it is. Hardly an accident. It was deliberate. It was premeditated and it was targeted against a specific person. Luckily, they missed that person, but unfortunately, they hit two other people. And so at the time that they made the statement, by the way, there was zero evidence leading anybody to believe that those things were true, that it was deliberate, that they were targeting anybody. None of that was the case. This is what the mayor did. They just put out a statement, basically calling it what they felt like it should have been instead of actually reporting the facts on what actually took place. So within no time, you had Twitter, all the blue check marks going on to Twitter, talking about Ron DeSantis because they were saying that it's his fault. If you recall, Ron DeSantis passed a bill uh, fairly recently, and it was aimed at the BLM rioters, stuff like that, where a lot of BLM people were... They were, if they were blocking traffic and all that stuff and beating on windows, you you name it, doing the standard BLM stuff that they were doing last year. If there were riders that were doing that, then a driver had the right to basically drive off, or even if it meant possibly hitting that person with their car if they felt threatened by them. In other words, if some guy is hitting your window with a baseball bat, you have the right to drive off, and if you run that person over and injure them at whatever the situation that's caused by it may be, then you should not be held liable as the driver because you were driving off in self-defense, right? That's what actually Ron DeSantis actually put into law because it was supposed to protect us citizens from being charged in situations like rioters and whatnot, taking these riots taking place for BLM or whatever the cause may be. They're trying to say that Ron DeSantis somehow is at fault for this. This was a guy that just hit people in a crowd. He wasn't in danger of his life. So if they actually knew what the bill even stood for, they wouldn't be trying to blame Ron DeSantis for any of this. But once again, left-wing people don't care about the facts. We know how this works. So 12 hours after the event, the hashtag was uh, trending, and it was hashtag Death Santis, talking about Ron DeSantis. Once again, Twitter didn't run anything about saying this was misinformation. Considering the fact that it was, there was nothing proving that Ron DeSantis' law, if you knew what it was, had anything to do with that whatsoever because it didn't. And nobody had any proof whatsoever that this was even an intentional attack. But they just assumed it to be the case. Of course, once again, it was not a premeditated 
terrorist attack either. It wasn't either one of those things, regardless of what they wanted to make it out to be. But it was a result of a tragic accident. So the man that was actually driving the truck was wearing a Fort Lauderdale gay men's chorus t-shirt, and the chorus's president, Justin Knight, said that the driver was part of the chorus family. Oops. That's where the left-wing oops kind of comes in there, because... All of a sudden, oh, wait, the driver is a gay man and he's in the gay chorus. And yeah, so what are we going to do now? What happened to that whole narrative? Well, the fact is, is that they're used to this. I mean, if we're talking about, you know, the way that the Democrats try to report on certain issues, this is nothing new for us to see this. But for them, all of a sudden, what took place? What happened? Well, they kind of backed those stories and those claims up very quickly. Now, of course, they didn't apologize or anything like that. They just simply just stopped saying it. That's kind of what happens. They just stop saying it. And that's always the way that it happens. But we need to look at and understand why this took place in the first place. The reason why this took place is because Democrats are always rushing to be a victim. Plain and simple. They are always going to try and be a victim no matter what happens to them. When these situations take place... They need people to feel bad to fuel what it is and what agendas they want. So as a result of that, it made sense for them to assume that it was a deliberate terrorist attack on them. That was the way that they were going. That's what they've been doing for years is basically trying to make those claims. But all of a sudden, they find out that it wasn't. They find out that it was one of their own, one of their own that is particularly in their protected class, the ones that can do no wrong. I mean, think about it. We're talking about a pride parade, correct? It's in the name itself that these people can, in their eyes, do no wrong. So when a gay, actual gay man is the one that causes the accident that kills somebody, well, then all of a sudden you're going to see them not talk much about it at all. It's very similar to actually what took place at the Pulse nightclub in Orlando some few years ago, if you recall, uh, the general situation that took there where the Muslim uh, Muslim radical uh, shot like 49 people in, in this uh, gay club there in Orlando. Tragic event. But the thing is, is that Democrats don't want to talk about that at all, right? Now, why wouldn't they want to talk about that? Because the Ilhan Omars and the other people that are in Congress that are Democrats feel like the Muslims are also a protected class. They can't Attacked them. Now, had it been a Christian, you'd hear it all over the place to this day. I guarantee you, you wouldn't stop hearing it. But because it was another protected class to them, they can't call it what it is. They won't. You'll never hear them say that the situation at the Pulse nightclub was a terrorist incident. You'll never hear those words from any Democrat ever until something changes. But I doubt that it's going to change simply because the person that did it was Muslim. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind there. So already, once again, the mayor is trying to walk these things back. So they said in a statement, a new statement, after these details became aware for everyone, they said, quote, I was an eyewitness to the horrifying events. It terrorized me and others around me. I reported what I saw to law enforcement and had strong concerns about what transpired. Concerns for the safety of my community. I feared it could be intentional based on what I saw from mere feet away. Yeah, sure. You you assume that. But then you, once again, you were assuming that because you saw that it was a white guy, right? And then all of a sudden your narrative changed because he was wearing a gay t-shirt. That's basically what took place. Once again, now they went from terrorist to terrorized, okay? See how they're changing the vernacular uh, vernacular a little bit to try and fit it to the new information. They won't directly correct themselves. They just kind of just stop talking about it or talking about it in a very different way all of a sudden because they realize that they screwed this up majorly. Once again, this is the way the Democrats are going to operate because they don't care about what is actually factual. They care about the feelings of things. Liberals care about feelings, not what's actually factual. That's the way that this has worked in politics for the very longest period of time. And the fact is is that had this been some random person on the street, I think we could maybe excuse them for saying something like that. But this is the mayor, okay? This is an elected official. And you expect for 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 any elected official or anyone like that or a politician to be measured in their words, to be careful about the things that they say until all the information is available. But once again, they don't practice that. They are so 
wanting to be a vi- I mean, I'm telling you right now, they, they would never say that they wish that that person was dead, but they, but since they are dead, they'll, they'll wish in the back of their minds that it had been a straight white man that did it. They need it to be the case because they need it to prove what happens. The fact that it was another protected class, one of their own, just really highlights the actual hypocrisy, the lies that Democrats will oftentimes tell to do whatever they can to be the victim. It is the best status that they can ever achieve. That's them in a nutshell. That's basically how that works. So Megan Rapinoe is in trouble again. This is the lesbian soccer player that was trying to reformat all of Victoria's Secret's line of clothing. I didn't really get into too much detail about this on any of the shows, but basically she's trying to come in and say that Victoria's line items of clothes are racist and and sexist and pretty much every kind of woke terminology, the istophobe, you know, that, that kind of stuff. All of that kind of under the same roof. She's trying to claim that it's all of that, that they need to revamp the the clothing because it's not about the women wearing them for men. It's about the fact that it's about just the women themselves and that they need to make them more comfortable because that's exactly what women care about when they're shopping at Victoria's Secret. But that's another story. The thing here is she recently got caught, I guess, a bit of her own, taste a bit of her own medicine in a way. Because of an old tweet, a 10-year-old tweet that she made discriminating, or at least what looks like being racist against somebody, uh, for looking Asian. So the actual tweet is aimed at a previous teammate of hers, uh, and the, the account is actually Tashi Kai, something like that. I think the actual uh, player's name was Natasha Kai or something along those lines. But the tweet reads, you look Asian with those closed eyes. Now this is a tweet, like I said, from 2011. And people have dug this up, and now they're trying to get her canceled because of it. Now, keep in mind, Rabino, she has all of these new sponsorship deals with Nike, Subway, Cliff Bar. So everybody's kind of going after these organizations and saying, hey, do you really want to tag this person or have this person be uh, the sponsor of this person in any way? But the fact is that, once again, she's just a victim of cancel culture at this point, most likely. I mean, we'll see. Maybe she'll get a free pass. Probably nobody will care because... She's not a conservative, obviously, Um, but we'll see what actually takes place with this. But the thing that really comes to my mind here is understanding exactly why this tweet is even a thing. Why is it that every time, maybe every month or whatever it is, that we find that some left-wing person was actually being extremely racist in the past or has said something to possibly get them canceled? And oftentimes keep in mind that it's the people that are advocating for the cancel culture that wind up being the ones that are in under fire for getting canceled. It's like... They condone it until they're the ones under the microscope, right? Well, this uh, there's this very important tweet that this guy put out here. I don't know exactly who this guy is. It's this uh, Shant MM is their, uh, their, their tag on Twitter. But they made a very good point. And they said in their tweet, The reason why so many extremely woke people turn out to have been bigoted in the past is because bigotry used to be the best way to bully and intimidate people. But now... Performative anti-bigotry is the best way to bully and intimidate people, an evolving tool set for sociopaths. And I think that this is absolutely spot on. It's a perfectly great analysis of what's taking place right now in our society with a lot of the people that are on the left. Because what you see is that in the past, the way that they got you to believe what they wanted you to believe is by calling you these slurs and this goes all the way back by the way to the kkk which by the way was founded operated run by democrats keep that in mind all the way from then and up till now these people that wanted to be so tolerant were the ones that were the worst about these things that had the worst offenses about everything because the way that they wanted to change your mind the way that they wanted to direct you in a certain notion or direction was all based off of whatever it is that they felt was necessary to do at the time, which was using these racial terms or these racist, what would be called racist today or sexist today. They would do that all the time, right? And now we're in a society where it's virtue signaling. That's really what it is. When they say performative anti-bigotry, it basically means 
you try to be super, super virtuous and good in every way in, in the way that you view yourself. So it's based more like a self-righteous type thing, but not really that you feel that way. It's just performative. It's fake. So in other words, it's virtue signaling. It's not a real authentic you. It's just something that you're using to perpetuate these feelings and try to be better than by saying, well, I'm on this moral high ground, so therefore you must do these things and I'm better than you that way. And that's how they try to uh, effectuate change. The problem is they weren't always that way. That's not the way that it used to be. And all of them have old tweets that wind up kind of getting them all canceled. So it's just another situation of the left eating their own, but I'm not surprised by it because we've seen it so many times over and over again. Once again, I don't think that anything's probably going to happen to her because she's the left's love child. They don't really want to cancel their own in this sense. She's kind of too big at this point for that to really happen. But it is interesting seeing tweets like this come from these people that literally support cancel culture. So that's pretty ridiculous. So just a quick reminder that I do have a Patreon page where you can donate directly to the show. And if you would please remember to leave a review if you were listening to this on Apple Podcasts, that greatly helps the show out. Sometimes it takes the courageousness of students to speak out against the school board or the school to tell them what is really going on, the wrongs of what they're actually doing. Sometimes we've seen parents do it, but this time a nine-year-old girl, girl in Minnesota actually speaks out against BLM and the posters that the school has been putting up here again. The other day I was walking down the hallway at Lakeview Elementary School to give a teacher a retiring gift. I looked up onto the wall and saw a BLM poster and an Amanda Gorman poster. In case you don't know who that chick is, she's some girl who did a poem at Biden's so-called inauguration. I was so mad. I was told two weeks ago at this very meeting spot, no politics in school. I believed what you said at this meeting. So at lunch, I went up to my principal to tell him about the BLM poster and that I wanted it down. He said it's not coming down. I was like, yeah, it is, because the school board said on May 25th, no BLM or politics in school. He said, that's weird. They were the, one who, they were the ones who made them. I was stunned. When I was here two weeks ago, you told us to report any BLM in our schools. Apparently, you know they're in our schools because you made the signs. I said there should be no BLM in schools, period. It does not matter the color you make the posters and the font you use. We all understand the meaning. It is a political message about getting rid of police officers, rioting, burning buildings down while King Governor Welch just sits on his throne and watches. We all know. Changing the font or the color of posters does not change the meaning. I am nine years old and I know that. You expect me to believe that you did not know what you were doing by making these posters? Come on, people. I do not judge people by the color of their skin. I, I don't really care what color their hair, skin, or eyes is. I judge by the content or the way they treat me. MLK said, I have a dream that one day my four little children will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. That dream has come true. I do not care or look at the color of skin, but you make me think of it. I have Asian, Mexican, white, Chinese, black friends, and I don't care. I like them because some of them make me laugh, some are sweet and kind, sporty, or share the love of God. They are just my friends. You have lied to me, and I am very disappointed in all of you. You cannot even follow your own rules. If you're going to do that, why do we follow any rules we deemed unfit or ridiculous? I'm not following your mask rule anymore, then. Get the posters out of our schools. Courage is contagious, so be courageous. So first of all, well done to this girl for doing this. Uh, very well spoken and, and really just highlighting all of the hypocrisy and the ridiculousness with the school trying to do these posters and put them up and pretending as if they're separate issues when they're all the same issue. So the superintendent actually put out a statement in response to this girl and he said, quote, that the series of posters are there to affirm our unwavering commitment to and in support of our black students and staff. This series includes two Black Lives Matter posters. While the district has not changed its position that the Black Lives Matter global organ or global network is a political organization, we recognize that there is a non-political so social justice movement represented by the statement Black Lives Matter. Lakeville area schools branded Black Lives Matter posters are permissible under policy 535. We asked staff who want to 
uh, put up Black Lives Matter posters in the classroom or workspace to use those from this poster series. Now, the problem I have with this statement is very simple. They need to realize that they are making this political. This, see, the issue is, and I've said this before, is that many people don't think that Black Lives Matter on its own is political. The, the truth is, is that you have to think about it in the terms of what they're actually saying when they say it, okay? Now, they're saying, well, the global network, they don't really, uh, they're political, obviously, but, but, these, but just the meaning of it itself isn't political. The meaning of it itself is political. Here's why it's political, okay? Put up a White Lives Matter poster. Just do it. Just do it. Try it. Please. Please. Just humor me. Put up a White Lives Matter poster and, and tell me what happens within 30 minutes of it being up. You're going to have somebody up in arms about it. Somebody mad about it. Why are they mad about it? Ask them why they're mad about it and tell me that it's not political. Okay? That's why I'm saying this. If Black Lives Matter isn't political, then White Lives Matter is perfectly fine. Then All Lives Matter posters are also perfectly fine at the school too. But you know, just as well as I do, that you all you have to do is just switch it around. And if it all of a sudden is considered as racist by them, then it's political. It's political because it doesn't. It means that Black Lives Matter doesn't apply to all races. Lie, whatever insert color here, Lives Matter doesn't apply to all races. They don't believe that. They never have. I don't care about the the global organization or whether you agree with them politically or not. But don't pretend as if just the statement itself isn't political. I mean, if we lived in a non-politicized world, sure we could say Black Lives Matter. But why would we need to say that? Why are we singling out Black Lives in the first place? The fact is, is that when you're looking at the situations that they're even talking about, the only reason they're even bringing it up is based on a lie. When you look at George Floyd, it's based on a lie. When you look at Michael Brown or any of these other people, Breonna Taylor, all of the information that they know about these people is based on a lie. And yet, for some reason, you still want to support the political notion of this or just the statement of it. The statement of it is still based off of a lie. Otherwise, there would be no reason to say it in the first place. Because nobody in the United States, nobody in the United States feels that black lives don't matter. Or that anybody's life doesn't matter. Okay? The only people that feel like black lives don't matter are Democrats that support abortion. Just saying what it is. But they don't care about any of that, obviously. The thing is, once again, is that it is political. And, and that's how you know. Somebody also kind of made a, a similar statement about the critical race theory as well. Like, if you don't think critical race theory is racist, replace all of the words black and white and just swap them around. And if it sounds racist all of a sudden, then it's racist, regardless of what color is in there. Okay? That's the way that it works. But the thing is, is that I know some people will probably see this video and they'll say, well, why is it that you are okay with people exploiting children for politics or political reasons? Well, all I have is two words for you, and that's Greta Thunberg. But besides that, the thing is that we're not trying to start a political movement around what this girl is saying. The, the truth is, is that she's making these statements, and I think it's just courageous and, and brave for her to say these things and, and confront the school on their own terms, uh, with their own hypocrisy, calling them out on what we know to be the case. That's why we can look at this and say, good on her. We don't have to try and form some massive political movement around her like Greta Thunberg and continue to use her and act like she's the moral authority about how everything works. So still great video and glad that we're seeing more students come up and actually just speak for themselves uh, with that kind of bravery and just say what is actually taking place in the schools. So speaking of critical race theory, you have this black father that actually is in Illinois and they spoke out. He said exactly what I think a lot of us are feeling, but just really completely destroyed the entire critical race theory argument. When you talk about critical race theory, which is pretty much going to be teaching kids how to hate each other, how to dislike each other, that's pretty much what it's going to that's pretty much, I don't care what you say, it's pretty much what it's going to all come down to. You're going to deliberately teach kids, this white kid right here got it better than you because he white? You're going to personally tell a white kid, oh, the black people are all down and suppressed. How do I have two medical degrees if I'm sitting here oppressed? How do I get, first of all, sign up, because I only got five minutes now, not five minutes. Two medical degrees, no mom, no dad in the house, work my way through college, sat there and hustled my butt off to get through college. You're going to tell me somebody that looked like all y'all white folks kept me from doing that? Are you serious? 
Not one white person ever came to me and said, well, son, you're never going to be able to get nowhere because you know the black people. But guess what? What's sickening about this whole thing is what y'all doing right now is already something I do in my community right now to speak out against stuff because black folks are getting told by other black folks, oh, you know you ain't going to be able to do nothing out there in the world because them white folks ain't going to let you get no. Oh, you know you're not going to be able to do it here because you know, white, the, the white man, the white man going to keep you down. Well, how did I get where I am right now if some white man kept me down? How am I now directing over folks that look just like you guys in this room right now? How? What, what, what kept me down? What oppressed me? I work for myself from off the streets to where I am right now. You're going to sit here and tell me this lie of critical race theory? Of this, this, this the reason why black folks can't get ahead because of white folks? Are you kidding me? This is what we come to now. I can't believe we're even talking about this right now. The last thing I'm going to say right here is something that's crazy. Martin Luther King said he wanted his kids to grow up in a world where they are judged by the contents of their what? Character. Their character, not their skin. If they let this stuff go on right now, it is absolutely doing the complete reverse of what he's doing. So when February comes, don't talk about Martin Luther King. When February comes, don't talk about black history. None of y'all gonna sit there and just pee, much pee on his grave with this nonsense. That's exactly what's about to happen. Lastly, we are talking about our kids. We are talking about our children. What's so sickening about me, I love the Discovery Channel. You will see that on the Discovery Channel, animals will put their lives on the line to protect their children from yeah. danger. Yeah. Nobody want to get to the heart of the matter, get to the meat of the matter, get to the moral of the story. It all comes down to it. The person that's going to be suffering from this, the one that's going to be hurt from this, is the kids. Yeah. Ten years from now, if this stuff goes on, whose fault is it going to be? Whose fault is it going to be? Who are we going to look back on and blame for this? Because this is stuff we're talking about right now. This stuff is going on right now. I do this stuff on a daily basis. I'm in the hood. I'm in the communities. I'm out there with folks in their face. I've been doing stuff since I was 18 years old, talking to black folks. And you know what? None of them are buying this nonsense. None of them are. But if you want to implement this into the school system, I guarantee you to the day that I die, I'm going to be the very person right there debunking stuff, tearing stuff down, letting them know they can do exactly what I did and get exactly where I am by putting themselves to work and getting there. Ain't not one white person ever going to keep any of them from getting there. So the CRT stuff, BS. You know, what's really crazy about all of this is that a lot of Democrats out there literally on Twitter are saying that it's only white parents that are opposing critical race theory. It's not. And I've played several clips of black mothers, black fathers on this show showcasing that. But this guy is just another one in the long line of parents that are saying this is absolutely ridiculous. And he's asking the question, how in the world do I have two medical degrees? And you're going to call me oppressed. I'm not oppressed. And, and that's so true. How did I get here? How did I do this? This is really the biggest lie about critical race theory that's there. These people that came up with it, that are teaching it, that support it, they cannot view black people as being able to get out of their current, or if they're in a bad situation, out of that bad situation. They can't. Because if there's a way out, there's no such thing as systemically racist. There isn't. And there isn't anyways, because plenty of people have gotten out. They blatantly will ignore some of the most successful black people ever. See, I remember a time when Black History Month was based off of looking at people like Ben Carson, Thomas Sowell, you name it. Successful black people. But now, we live in a day and age where they can only focus on the criminals of the world. George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, the same lady that had a dead body in the back of her trunk that nobody wants to talk about when she rented a car. Once again, the, these things are very important to talk about when we're dealing with these discussions. And I think that leaving them out of, this, uh, out of the discussion is lying to children and it's disingenuous at best. But the thing is, too, is that Rhode Island and uh, they're actually their teachers are being busted after offering students bonus points, by the way, for basically agreeing with the teaching of CRT in schools. That's crazy to me right now because... And I thought this was a joke when I read it, but it actually is uh, the case here. So this report is based off of a few documents that were obtained by the Parents Defending Education, or PDE, that revealed that two teachers at Barrington in Barrington, Rhode Island, offered five bonus points to each student on their next test if they defended CRT. So what this is dealing with is that they were trying to stop a House bill uh, number uh, 6070. And this particular bill was actually prohibiting the teaching of divisive concepts. So in the bill, it said the legislation aims to prevent the teaching of critical race theory, which includes concepts that an individual by virtue of their race or sex is inherently racist, sexist, or oppressive, whether consciously or unconsciously an individual by virtue of their race or sex bears responsibility for the actions committed in the past by other members of the same race or sex and meritocracy or such traits as hard work ethic are racist or sexist 
or were created by a particular race to oppress another race. So I'm going to show an email here that's directly from the teacher. By the way, at the bottom, you can see that she put clearly her pronouns. She, her, hers. Obviously, I mean, come on. This is ridiculous. This should not be, they, they should not be sending em emails with these stupid pronouns in their profile at schools, but you, whatever. So the email right at the bottom there shows, as always, if you are a student in my class, you will receive five points on your next unit test if you decide to testify and provide me with your written testimony. So right there, point blank, she's saying it, you know, you need to provide me with your written testimony first before you do it. Okay, so we're supposed to be okay with that? Because I'm pretty sure she's doing it so she can make sure that they it's approved by her. Which we know what her actual opinion of it would be if you were maybe the side against CRT. Now, after the uh, PDE reached out to the parents for comment, one of them claimed that the students were told to represent either side and would receive points no matter which one they chose. But of course, they're only doing that because I think they're saying it. Once again, I we know exactly what they're trying to do here. There's, there's no mistake about it. And it's clear and obvious that even the teachers are trying to literally give benefits to students to oppose the people that are in there trying to say that CRT is bad. They're in there to support it and to giving them grading incentives for that. They should be fired right there on the spot for that kind of stuff. That's absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Now, I'm going to go ahead and leave you with a quote from Thomas Sowell, which has always been ahead of his time. Always somebody that makes so much sense in a time of so much craziness that's going on right now. And what he said is, quote, not since the days of Hitler youth have young people been subjected to more propaganda on more politically correct issues. At one time, educators boasted that their role was not to teach students what to think, but how to think. Today, their role is far too often to teach students what to think on everything from immigration to global warming to the new sacred trinity of race, class, and gender. And of course, as always, Thomas Sowell is spot on here. Teachers now are trying to teach students about what they should think, what they should believe, not based off of the things and what they may look at or just teaching them how to think critically, how to look at different issues, just teaching them and expanding their mind in general. That's not what teachers are doing these days. What they're trying to do is indoctrinate our kids. When you're teaching them what to think, especially when it comes down to so certain social issues and whatnot or religious based issues, calling Christianity a cult or whatever they want to say about it in that negative light, then you are no longer teaching them how to think. You're not leaving it up to the student to decide what it is that they believe. You're telling them you must believe these things. And if you go outside of that box, you are a bigot. You are racist. You are sexist. You are transphobic. And these are the classmates that are around you. They must fit and you must accept them as who they are. You must call them exactly what they want to be called in every single way possible. They don't believe that you can change the hearts and minds of people through normal actions. What they're trying to do is start at a school level and work their way all the way up, telling kids everything that they believe and indoctrinating them from the first grade, pretty much. I mean, it starts even earlier than that in some situations. So I'll leave you with that. But with that being said, I thank you for watching or listening to the show, and I will see you on the next one.